This is David Prosper, host of the Leadership Revolution. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast from Public House Media. Hey, you're listening to Let's Hustle with Lee and Chelsea. We are two girls making our way in sales and entrepreneurship. We set out to make this podcast after entering our late 20s and realizing we were hitting a wall and felt like our lives and careers were stagnant. After expressing this feeling to countless other women, we realized we weren't alone. So each week we're bringing you real conversations with real people that are authentic, realistic, and relatable in hopes that you can grow into the best version of yourself. So strap in and let's hustle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Let's Hustle Um, over here with Chelsea. This is Lee. Um, And today on our show, we have a really, really exciting and awesome guest with us. Um, We have my good friend, Terrence Sullivan, who is here. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hello. Hey, guys. (laughs) And uh, so Terrence is the executive director of the Kentucky Commission on Human Rights. Thank God I got that correct. You got it. I'm, yes. I'm very impressed. Killed it. I get it wrong, too. And <laughs> so we'll see what happens. No worries. <laughs> um, but we wanted to bring Terrence on today because I think right now it is very socially relevant, um, all the work that he's doing. Um, he's also developed a platform called Anti-Racism Kentucky that we wanted to bring him on and talk about. Um and so we just wanted to have, you know, important conversations because I know a lot of times on this podcast, we have people on, we talk about, you know, their business and how they built it and, you know, their mindset of, you know, how they made all this money. But sometimes like we do want to talk to professionals that are in fields of, you know, relevant social <laughs> issues <laughs> that we are having right now as a country. So, um, yeah. So what's up, Terrence? How are you doing today? I am good. I'm a little tired. I'm winding down one job and starting another. And so it's a lot of stuff doing, you know, wrap up meetings and transition plans and all of that good stuff. Absolutely. So what are you transitioning from? Obviously, you're transitioning into the Kentucky Commission on Human Rights. Um, So what are you transitioning out of right now? I like that you keep saying it now that you can get it right. I know. I'm like, do I, like, is there an abbreviation? Do I just call it KCHR? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. KCHR. Thank you. But right now until, until Friday at 5 PM, I am the director of state policy for a, an education nonprofit called knowledge works out of Cincinnati. Um, and what I do is just help create state policy to, allow for personalizing education for kids. So instead of having a one size fits all approach, you try to tailor what you're teaching to the kids who are in the room um, to master whatever the skills or competencies they're supposed to be learning, as opposed to leaving it up to just a random test to not really measure much of anything. Nice. I love that. That's amazing. We were literally just, just talking, talking about, about that. that. Yeah. No, we well, were... we're going to have an opening after Friday, so. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we can sit here and solve the world's problems, or we can we go apply. <laughs> That's true. Nice. I know a guy, so. <laughs> so how, I guess, like, how does that translate? Obviously, I'm assuming just, like, it's basic helping people out. How is that kind of translating into your new position and what kind of drew you and interested you to your new position? Um, I think it's, it's all equity based. Um, really you meet the, you meet people where they are and that can go for education. That can go for any interaction in life. You need to understand where people are in their personal journey Mm-hmm. And then that's the best way to help them because you're now on the same level. And so current position, that's education. It's, you know, you're supposed to be at fifth grade reading level, but you're at second grade reading level. Okay. This year we're going to start at second grade and we're going to gradually get you to fifth grade before the end of the year. Um, and I think the same thing can go with people's rights. Um, we obviously see with things going on that we're not where we should be. And the best or the quickest way to address that is to find out where are, where are we? 
do some assessment on that first and then take that and you can see, okay, well, now we know the areas where we need to grow and improve for these relations with other people. And so that's kind of what you do. And that's where I am. And so for the new role, um, it's having people who need someone to meet them where they are and help them have their needs met and be there for them and understand that they're coming from a place of some wrong or injustice that they face and try to meet them there and help them get through it. Nice. So, and I will be the first to admit, I'm extremely ignorant on what K C H R does. I was like, what is the letters? You did better Um, with the full name. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I know. Um, I'm very ignorant as to what they do. Like when it, is it, you know, are they trying to push policies? Are they trying to lobby for certain, you know, things? So give us a breakdown of like literally what they do (laughs) for us who are dumb. (laughs) It's not for people who are dumb. (laughs) He's meeting us where we're at. He's meeting us where we're at. Yes. You're killing it so far. Thank you, Chelsea. You're welcome. Now we, (laughs) honestly, even people, it's a, it's a very interesting agency. One that is very important, but people don't really know it exists. And my 60 and 90 day plan is to make it a lot more relevant. Um, and to get it known a little more, I I'm going to take over the social media accounts ASAP and start just telling people that we exist. And I'll explain a little bit about what the office does. And then you can, Tell me if you think it's something that's needed or not. Hopefully you think it is because it will be my job. Um, (laughs) But the office or the agency was created to enforce Kentucky's Civil Rights Act. And so you will hear things that relate to any discrimination, like in the workplace or in housing or just any type of discrimination that's on the basis of race, religion, gender, all those protected classes in the Kentucky Civil Rights Act. I can go on in a second and talk about one of my week one plans because our protected classes are pretty weak. Um, (laughs) States like New York have 30 protected classes and we have seven and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, But what the office does is let's say one of you were going for a job and or you were working at a place and they did something based on the fact that you're a woman and you lost your job or you lost wages or whatever what you would do is my office will exist for you to go on and file a complaint and say what happened and then we'll have a team of investigators who will read through the case or read through your complaint and see if there's any probable cause to move forward and see if there has been a violation of the Kentucky Civil Rights Act. And if there is probable cause of a violation in your complaint, it's then escalated to another level where you will either, the employer could choose to mediate the situation or we'll have a team of attorneys who will help walk you through court And on your behalf, the state will be behind you. Um, And so you don't have to spend money to try to fight this fight on your own. So the office exists to just help you basically navigate discrimination. And anyone who faces discrimination based on those protected classes of our Civil Rights Act, then you can have the state help you walk through the way to have some kind of remedy or resolution for your issue. And so it's a very important piece of the greater human rights struggle is just, it's scary and it's hard. I know personally it sucks when somebody does something because you're black or because you're a woman or gay or whatever. Um, And I'll get back to that. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's, it's very scary to try to think okay well you know this is a company they have a lot of money I really don't know how I can fight them I'm just going to suck it up and go find another job or go 
find another place to live because the landlord hated me because they don't like women because somebody said no to them for prom or something. I don't know. People suck. So, um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> basically you ha it's just knowing that you have somebody that's there who can help you navigate that process and do some things on your behalf. Nice. So kind of what you're saying and what I'm hearing is a lot of the work you need to do is just making people aware because this, I mean, this commission exists primarily so that people can reach out to you all. You know what I mean? Like you're not doing the reaching out, right? Right. So it's, it's more reactive than proactive. We do have, um, which an is education. In it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's great for sure. Yeah. There's an education and outreach team that goes to like the workplace and does workplace trainings on, um, you know, how not to be a terrible person, um, or can go to landlords and give them, trainings on, okay, you can discriminate on them not paying rent, but you can't discriminate on them not being a white dude. Um, but for the most part, it's reactive. That again is, I have so many hopes and plans for moving forward. Um, I hope in some, in the coming years that jurisdiction can be expanded to, for certain matters to be more proactive and issue driven um investigations as opposed to responding simply to complaints but a good example is you know what's going on right now to be able to say you know what police we're going to look at if you violate any of these rights um that's way down the line and probably that's a decision that's not mine to make um but it is for people to seek you out and that's why i said i would like to be a little bit more visible and make it easier to file a complaint, make it easier to know that that's an, actually an option instead of some people who just give up and really try to do it on their own or don't know anything exists. So my hopefully we can get some people in to help with branding and just getting some of that awareness out there so people know there's somebody that will be there for you. So as being in the community and not having a title like yours or really any title, <laughs> um, what can we do to be proactive? Because I'm sitting back and I'm like, I could post all I wanted on social media. I could post, I can share, I can talk to my friends. But like at the end of the day, what does that do? What does that do? It does literally nothing. So uh, how can we make a difference? How can we be proactive? I think in that sense, um, and I'll be the first to tell you titles of any sort mean absolute crap. So don't say that again. Everybody <laughs> has their station that they're holding and everybody's important for whatever they're doing. Just as long as you do what you do and do it well, then it's all good. Um, but I will say in that situation, being proactive means letting people know that they have options. I'll give you an example. Um, two days ago, I'm on the JCPS racial equity and advisory board. And one of my fellow board members mm -hmm. sent me a tweet that someone had posted that their landlord had kicked them out or was kicking them out because they saw them protesting this past weekend. And a lot of people liked it and shared it and replied, Oh, that sucks. Like your landlord sucks. But this person sent me that tweet and was like, hey, I want to try to get this person in touch with KCHR, there you go, Lee, and <laughs> have them file a complaint. And I think that's where that proactiveness comes in, is if you hear about something that's going on and it doesn't seem like they know that there are options out there to say, hey, there's a thing you can do and there are people here that, who can help you and just pointing them in that direction. Um, cause you can't file complaints on behalf of someone, yeah. but you could tell them about what their options are because when you're facing something like that, you're more, you're so frustrated. You're not thinking procedurally. You don't think, Oh man, well, 
if I go to the KCHR website and look for the file a complaint form and then fill that out, you're thinking I want to like something needs to happen right now. So for you as someone who sees some type of injustice, you can say, Hey, there's this thing that you can contact them and see if you have a case and maybe they can help you out. So what is the, like the punishment or what happens to somebody? Like what's, what do they, you know what I mean? Like you file it, you do the thing. What's the outcome? I show up at their house and arrest them. No, (laughs) (laughs) it's case by case. Like I said, there's a mediation option where you could work out some kind of agreement. Um, but we also, depending on the way it goes, you either can go to court or whatever, the, however the court system works out. We also have decision-making power or authority that's the same as a judge, depending on the, direct, the route that your case goes. Um, let's say we did a mediation, and then our office said, okay, landlord, you can have them kicked out, but you have to pay them, you know, $2,000 to get a new place. Um, and it has the affor- the enforcement of law. So okay. you can make dope. that decision and say, you're doing this and there you go. And so it, and I will make one clarification. The purpose of the commission is to adequately assess what situation what the situation was and if a violation happened and so it's not just some agency that exists to like go after businesses and landlords and all that it's just trying to make sure things were handled in the proper and legal and not discriminatory way and so um people who file complaints don't always win just because you feel aggrieved doesn't mean that you have been and so that's do you find that happens a lot do you find that people take advantage of that? Maybe they're just angry and they're like, fine, you're going to be like this, I'm going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I personally wouldn't know. I haven't technically started yet. Um, okay. <laughs> He's like, well, not yet. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> but I, I have read um, some of the complaints. And I think for most people, there's, even if it doesn't find that there's been some complete um malicious intent or discriminatory practice there's some kernel of truth in it where there was something but it wasn't necessarily what you perceived um so i don't think people are going through all the trouble to go through the process because it's not as simple as it should be in my opinion it's not simple and so i don't think people do it out of spite because you're also creating time that you're going to have to take up on your own end. So if it was as simple as saying, oh, this person did this to me, and then you had no other interaction where you just kind of could be a troll and say all this crap about people, I think it would more of that would happen. But since it's a process that you enter into, I think that's a safeguard to keep you from doing that. Cool. Nice. So kind of, I mean, obviously on the subject of, discrimination um you have recently formed on um social media anti-racism kentucky which i think is awesome and genius and definitely needed right now um so kind of tell us a little bit about that um i'm gonna go ahead and assume that it was sparked from obviously the you know I don't want to oh, say like, something going on. Yeah, something going on, something really small, not really important. Um, <laughs> obviously, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, especially being here in Louisville, Kentucky, and us being so close to the Breonna Taylor situation, um, it's really needed, and I think it's so awesome. So, kind of go off a little bit about um, when you started it, why you started it, and what it's doing right now. Sure. So, I, um, I I'm, I'm never an I person, so. I try to get that out of my uh, dialect or my whatever. Mm -hmm. I worked with my friend OJ, Aleka, and we were watching. It was very interesting. We were kind of talking but not talking last week when things were kind of really at the height. Um, It was the day after 
two days after the first major big protest where the buildings got some damage and people were really freaking out and watching the news and seeing people tear gassed and shot with rubber bullets. And I was like, this is why there's, there's no need for this. And so we, we both text each other and like, we need to do something. I don't know why we said that at the time we weren't talking about it at all. We weren't even talking that day, <laughs> but I think we both felt called to do something because everybody has their own form of protest and activism. There are people who are there with signs, people who are marching to the mayor's house, people doing all these things. And that may not have been our lane. Um, we both worked in policy and government for a very long time. And we were like, how can we help with our skill set? Like, what can we do? Um, and how can we get people to come to the table to help do it? And so this was literally just <laughs> texting until 3 a.m., talking about ideas. And we said the biggest hurdle that people face in trying to do something is we, can, we have people who are proposing these responses and saying, oh, we need to do this and we need to do this. Um, but... OJ and I have worked in the policy space to know that a lot of the decision makers, they feel they need concrete next steps and action items to move forward. You can say defund the police, but like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so what we wanted, wanted to do was find a way to get concrete, concrete action items, policy plans, and things that are tangible to then present to decision makers, but also in a way that includes everyone on that solution and just find a way to tear away at the vestiges of racism because it's present everywhere, not just in police and criminal justice policy, but in education, in health, um, talking about the maternal mortality rate um, for black women and like it's everywhere. And so we need to finally get people to start acknowledging the fact that it's everywhere. And so what we wanted to do was create a way for people to say, I want to be involved and I have an idea or I want to be involved, but I don't have any ideas. Um, and so we thought up, anti-racism Kentucky where we would solicit ideas and engagement. And so we created some social media pages where people can say they want to be involved. And we are also collecting um, ideas on policies. And this past, this week, um, we sent out a survey that asked people to say, what areas are you interested in or what areas are you most passionate about? And so those Individuals can then, after Friday afternoon, um, we're going to let people, we're going to assign those committees based on where people saw the most interest. And then those committees will get to talk and talk about some of those solutions. And once we have a consensus on policy options and solutions, we're going to do research so we can bring research driven policy proposals to decision makers and say, this is what people want. Here's the data that shows why it's good. And this is the impact that you could have. And so as we move forward, that's the process where we're going to aim to put together a legislative agenda that has these policy proposals that we have decided upon collectively and put those together to present to the interim committees before the general assembly meets in January. We, um, again, coming from a background of working in that space, we know that the best way to success legislatively is to get on the radar now and have it vetted in the interim committees. That way when the session starts, it's already been heard a couple times and then it can sail through a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
that's, that's huge. I think that, I mean, that is literally taking, you know, issues that you feel like are very, you know, prominent right now and actually putting them into action. So that's awesome. Freaking good for you, dude. That's so tight. Thank you. It's not, not good for me. It's good for all of us. I mean, good we for had, everyone involved. <laughs> there we go. It's a mouthful, but yes. I mean, we had <laughs> over 180 people sign up the first week just to help do policies. Um, and we've had quite a few more since then. So when all is said and done, I anticipate we'll have maybe 300 people helping just shoot ideas out or be sounding boards or something. So it's, it's kind of, it's exciting. It's good to know that people care that much. And the biggest thing that we want to reiterate is this is not about any of us. It's just about trying to do the right thing. And so we really want to encourage people who normally don't feel like they have a seat at the table or know a table exists to show up and, a lot of times the best ideas come from people who don't exist in that space because they don't think in limitations. Um, a lot of people who work in the policy world, they think, oh, it would be really cool if we could do X, Y, and Z. But then you immediately go to, well, crap, how's it going to be paid for? And who's going to be for it and against it? But people who don't live in that world, they don't think in limits. And I think that that is big. Um, and I know that you all talk about like self care and all of that. And I think that's one thing that you can translate to your regular life too, is don't think in limits. Think about just what can be, but don't try to cut it down by a limitation. And so I think that's why we want people involved who aren't normally involved because they may feel like, Oh, I don't know as much as this economics professor about economic policy. Well, the economics professor thinks about things in a the way an economics professor would look at, and you think about it the way that a real regular person thinks about it. And more people are regular people than economics professors. So Maybe. we want everyone to just stay involved and give every, share your ideas because they're probably great. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So I guess I mean through a lot of this, this has been a really just eye-opening experience for a lot of people watching the Black Lives Matter movement kind of unfold in front of our eyes. Um, It's also been very overwhelming emotionally for a lot of people. Um, You obviously, oh, people at home can't see you, but you are black. Shocker to everyone. (laughs) Surprise. I I know. I just don't don't know if you knew that or not, but (laughs) (laughs) I'm so sorry to break the news. Um, But how are you dealing with this right now like what are you like how are you keeping your sanity because I just feel like it's like are do you wake up days and feel like hopeful for how it, you know vocal people are being do you feel like hopeless because everything do you feel sucks like, that like basic white girl is trying to speak for me and she needs to yeah. go home <laughs> like what are you what's your how are you feeling right now your first question was do I wake up and think something waking up implies sleep um so <laughs> <laughs> I haven't quite That's mastered true. that skill yet recently. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm, I was saying this to my team yesterday. I'm, ugh, I'm so many different emotions and I was like, roller coaster doesn't cut it because it's not even up and down. It's like up, down, sideways, diagonal. I don't know if you all have watched Harry Potter, but like, oh, of course, the, of course. The, the elevators at the ministry <laughs> is basically how my, yes. <laughs> And so uh, I'll start with the good. I, I have optimism um, that there are more people seeing the, the country for what it is. Um, and going back to the meeting people where they are for assessment, it, it takes knowing where we stand as a country, like what grade level are we reading on the subject of racism? And we're pretty low, but the fact that we can now, that we have more people seeing that now, and we have that visual report card that's just sitting there on the news, um, 
that gives me hope and optimism that some things will get better because it's more apparent now instead of, I don't know, instead of hearing stories, anecdotal evidence of things that have happened to someone you know, or for a lot of people, it's something you read about, but you don't really know anyone personally. Um, for me, I've had a couple instances where I could have been a hashtag. I had, I went home one time, um, and had six state troopers with guns in my face when they thought I looked like somebody. Um, and then here in Louisville, when I washed my car one day and he asked me who I took it from and yeah, so (laughs) it, it, you hear those stories from people and it's like, Oh, because some people are like, Oh, that didn't happen. Oh, well, some, I'm sure, I'm sure you did something else. Like, well, what did you say to make like, no, it's how it happens. And so I'm hopeful that the anecdotal evidence has now become visual evidence and we can move forward. But as much as I'm hopeful by that, it's also very frustrating because a lot of companies and people have put out statements that say like recent events have caused X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, no, it's not recent events. It's just recent things that you've seen. And we've been saying this for years and it's really hard to reconcile with that fact that like for years we've been saying how we feel and how we've been treated and no one a lot of people, not no one, but most people didn't listen or believe it. Or even if they did believe it, they took a willful ignorance to it to say, well, ain't me and I don't have to look at it. So I'm good. And so it's really frustrating to think of like going to the, the movement and black lives matter. It's, it's hard to, it, so it just puts it in perspective that, how much it takes to even partially matter at all. And you have to just keep going through the fire, so to speak, before someone who is not in the fire can feel a little bit of heat down the street. And that's hard. And it's hard to like look at yourself and say, well, if this had been happening to someone who didn't look like me, this would have been solved a long time ago. And so that's, I don't know, it, it's a reminder that we're really far away from equality because no matter what the laws and all of that says, for a lot of people, we're still different and we're still less valuable than you are. And this is just further proof that it took years and years and decades of the same thing happening, but nothing being done about it. And so, I don't know. I, I see people's statements and company statements and I'm sometimes more put off than encouraged because it's like, you knew this was a problem, but now that it's cool, you're going to say this statement that, that it, right before we started talking, I saw where a NASCAR driver, um, I think it was Bubba Watson, not Bubba Watson, it's a golfer. Um, but (laughs) I would not know either way. You could have just said his name. Yep. (laughs) Then Rusty Wallace actually, Mm -hmm. um, had the like hands in the hashtag on the car. And I was like, that's cool and all, but you're doing it when there aren't going to be fans at the at the raceway, Mm -hmm. would you all have done the same thing if you had your normal NASCAR crowd coming to this race? And I'm, I don't know, but I'm going to guess not. Um, and same thing with the NFL coming out after years of ruining someone's life and career. Mm -hmm. They're like, Oh, we, we recognize that error in our ways well, yeah, you don't have games on right now, so you're not going to lose ad revenue and sponsors by saying that. Don't be an ally when it's convenient. 
be one always. And so that's Sorry, I was pointing. So that's yeah. why you pause. That Here is, is a question for you that I have. I agree with you 100, 100%. But what do you say to the person who changes their mind? Like, I, that was effed up. What I did, what I had done, what I had said, I was so completely ignorant and wrong. And now I feel this way. Because I agree. At some point, it's like, okay, like, do you, we were literally just talking about this. Mm -hmm. I said, how many people are just doing this to do it, to save face for, like, so they will not stand out, so they don't look like they're ignorant. But, like, the whole black square thing, like, that really got me thinking about things. And then I was like, I can't just post about it. Like, this did a purpose for me personally. You know what I mean? It made me, like, read. It made me go into things. It made me, but, like. How many times did people just post that because everyone else was and they didn't want to be the only person that didn't post it? And like, oh, so yeah. I know that's a lot like that I just said right there. But what do you say to the person that's like, you're right, I was completely wrong and I'm sorry without them looking super fake? I love that person because, and again, until Friday afternoon, I work in education and it's all about growth mindset and it's, it's perfectly acceptable and actually applaudable to admit that you were wrong about something and to grow and to learn from it. Um, so for those people, I'm very thankful because we don't get anywhere without those people. Um, it doesn't lessen the fact that it's hard to deal with the fact that my explaining my existence didn't resonate to you, but that doesn't make me think any less of the fact that you did come around to it because at the end of the day, we just want to be on the same page. And if it took you being wrong to get there, at least you're there. Um, I, I look at a lot of things in, um, life. Like I look at streets because I'm a nerd and I, I like weird things. And I was just thinking one day, a couple years ago, it's fascinating to me that in some way, all the roads in the United States are connected. Like you have to use this road to get to that road, to get to that road. And we all have, we can all can have one destination. Like, I live over by Seneca Park, and if I want to go downtown, I can take 64, I can take Frankfurt Avenue, I can take Lexington Road, but my destination was downtown, and I got there. And I don't care if I if I said, Lee or Chelsea, meet me downtown. I don't care how you got there. I'm just happy you made it there. And so I don't care if someone admits they were wrong about something, and they as long as they're getting to the point where we wanted them to be in the first place. Amazing. That was a really good analogy. I know. Freaking getting misty eyed. Thanks a lot. (laughs) 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 Well, tell people where they can follow, um, not only anti-racism, Kentucky, but (laughs) KCHR on social media so that they can, um, keep up with everything that you guys are doing. Sure. On Twitter, we are anti-racism KY. Um, And on Facebook, we are the ARC initiative because you can't create a group with the word racism in it. Apparently, I guess I agree with that policy. Solid work, um, Mark. (laughs) The best you can do. Um, (laughs) You can find KCHR on the kentucky.gov website um i plan on next week really enhancing our um at least twitter presence um i'm still trying to think about how instagram would work since it's visual based Mm -hmm. but can't really post pictures of people coming in to file complaints like (laughs) right right exactly i don't know like throwback thursday Last week when I was writing my complaint, like you can't really do that. It's trying to figure out how that would work. Um, So more to come on that, but we will be active. I think that there is a Twitter account right now, but it's like 
50 followers. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, it's literally Kentucky commission on human rights. Mm -hmm. And that's just really long to search for. Um, so we're working on that, but anti-racism KY is up and running on Twitter and Facebook and you can find me or OJ Aleka on also on LinkedIn. Um, we have links to some of the things going on with anti-racism, but right now our biggest platforms are Facebook and Twitter. Cool. Perfect. <gasps> you know what I forgot? Yo- oh. Yoga time. Oh my gosh. Yoga time. Oh my gosh. Strike a pose. Dang it. I'm so sorry. Okay. At the end of every interview, we usually what we'll do is whatever guests we have on, we give them like a minute, two minutes, just a little platform because at the end of a yoga class, the yoga teacher's like, hey, do whatever pose you feel like doing for, you know, a couple minutes. So we like to give you an opportunity. If there's something we didn't talk about that you're really passionate about, if there's a show or a movie or something you want people to watch, um, this is kind of your little, you know, couple minute span of time where you can say whatever you want. So pose, do your pose. <laughs> wow. I also need to get into yoga, like I said to you the other day, yeah. <laughs> because my mind sucks and doesn't work. Um, <laughs> it's all right. Oh, I hate being put on the spot. No, um, I, I honestly, I just really want people to know um, that we all understand that there's a lot going on right now, and to just find your people and talk to them, and not in a, a, an awkward strange kind of way not another tangent that I could go into of the people who are randomly texting the black people they know and asking how they're doing don't do that um but people who you do talk to no matter what race they are like check in with them see what's going on like a lot of people in our current society how we do things we're all about like culture and so we'll post this life online that's not real and you don't post your actual feelings online. You're just kind of existing in your online space, but say real things to real people too. And so, I don't know. I think that that's important. Don't worry about your online presence. Like your comment or question earlier, Chelsea about like, Oh, well, do I want to do the black square or, Will it be weird if I don't? Like, don't worry about those things as much. Um, I'm not saying you specifically, but just people in general. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, Just, I said this to someone yesterday, just do you and what works. And so that's, and don't be racist. That's pretty much. (laughs) And that is the message. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. Awesome. Do you and don't be racist. That's a (laughs) t-shirt. That is a t-shirt and a bumper sticker. Bro, that's going to be the name of the episode. (laughs) I think so. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Well, Tarek, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate all that you're doing. We're going to keep up with you. Um, Everything that Terrence mentioned earlier about where you can find, um, all of his active social medias online. We'll make sure to link that um, in the details of this episode. Uh, Make sure to give us a follow, a rating, a review. It helps us. You're amazing. Thank you for um, tuning in today. Terrence, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's fun. Good. 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 And uh, we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye.